Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. So this is gonna be my Flash episode 11 video, The Sound and the Fury. So we got to meet Pied Piper, Hartley Rathaway. So I'm gonna do an explainer for his character, like a, a character history from the comics. And then I'll talk about some of the reverse Flash stuff that we learned. Lots of new details. So we still have like a ton of episodes left this season. So I think it's a little too soon to guess exactly what's going on, but we did get some cool clues and some really awesome Easter eggs that I'll explain. Okay, so just careful for spoilers from the episode, just because I'll, I'll be referencing this week's episode as well as some moments from last week's episode. Hartley Rathaway is the son of the two characters that we saw last week, the ones that had the painting that the rogues were trying to steal. As Harrison Wells explained, they ostracized him for being gay, which totally sucks. So instead of joining the family business, he joined Star Labs and became a physicist because he's a genius on the level of Harrison Wells. Well, Harrison Wells is kind of hiding a lot of things, so maybe he's not quite as smart as Harrison Wells. That was one of the really big things about them bringing the character on the show. They wanted a character that they would have to defeat on an intellectual level. They didn't want someone that the Flash could just outrun or outspend. That's one of the problems with superheroes having friends with unlimited funds. It's like if you need a really cool piece of technology, you can just fabricate it, no problems. Money isn't an issue. So they wanted to bring a rogue on that would challenge them on a different level. The funny thing is, is the showrunners described the character as thinking of himself as something of an evil Harry Potter which gives new meaning to the chess game. It just it reminded me of the Harry Potter chess game, like the big real life chess game at the end of that first movie. He kind of does look like he's cosplaying Harry Potter a little bit with those robes on. So in the comics, his actually his first appearance was the same first appearance as Gorilla Grodd. So he and Gorilla Grodd debuted at the same time. It was the Flash number 106, Menace of the Super Gorilla slash the Pied Piper of Peril. And the interesting thing about that story is Pied Piper helped the Flash, helped Barry Allen defeat Gorilla Grodd. So he has worked with the Flash in the past. He's not like a completely evil character like some of the Flash villains. He is one of the first DC characters to come out as gay. He's actually Captain Singh's boyfriend in the, in the Flash comics. They haven't fully explained it, although Captain Singh has mentioned his boyfriend. It's just interesting to note that one of the rogues is dating the captain of the police department. It's just, it's just a funny thought. Like, oh, here's my boyfriend, super criminal. As the show explained, he has a really strained relationship with his parents. In the comics, they actually, they were murdered and he was framed for it. He was even hypnotized to believe that he had done it. Eventually he got cleared and they found out that it was the Evan McCullough Mirror Master that had done it on Blacksmith's orders. So he and Mirror Master have this really big feud. So if Mirror Master ever comes on the show, I'll be interested to see if they, if they play it that way. Okay, so here we go, getting into top five moments now. So number five, Harrison Wells running around without the reverse flash suit on. So I have to explain, I saw a couple of people commenting on Twitter that were a little confused by the red lightning. A lot of people were thinking that he might be a future version of Barry Allen because of the, the red streak. Just to explain what's going on, the speed force, whenever the flash is running, he gives off yellow lightning. The reverse flash is the one that gives off red lightning. So regardless of who Harrison Wells really is, which, which version of the reverse flash he is, he's not the same person as Barry Allen. But it's just a lot of fun as we get deeper into the season and we start learning more and more about him as we start seeing him act more as the Reverse Flash. Number four, the prodigal son returns, meet Hartley Rathaway. I really like the crazy relationship that we saw in the flashbacks between Harrison Wells and Hartley. Like both of them are very abrasive people, like they're both kind of assholes, but they have this camaraderie, this brotherhood of minds. Of all the things in the episode that I, that I feel like they could have done a little bit better, it would have been explaining what Hartley's purpose was at Star Labs. Harrison Wells had that explainer where he was like, oh, you know, his parents hated him because he's gay. He was my number one guy. It doesn't really do justice to the pathos that his character has in the past. Obviously, we know why he's so pissed off in present day because of what Harrison Wells did to him. But the really interesting thing is that he is the second Flash villain, or the next in the line of rogues, that has goaded the Flash into a fight on false pretense. So remember in the last episode, the rogues already had the painting. They started the fight with the Flash with the sole purpose of taking him down. Pied Piper did the exact same thing. So he committed a crime, got the Flash to take him in so that he could get the stuff that he needed to kill the Flash in a later encounter. He's just the next in a long line of people to pull a fast one on the Flash. You can make as many jokes about that as you want. It does a really good job of playing into this theme of your heroes letting you down, you letting your heroes down, broken trust. There's going to be a lot of that going around later this season. Moving on to number three, Joe and Eddie are investigating Harrison Wells behind Barry's back. They'd just gotten done with that moment where Barry was telling Joe that he's still his number one guy. No one's going to come between us. Like the same conversation that Harrison Wells had with Hartley Rathaway, which is kind of funny. It's all about trust and hero worship. And then right away, Eddie walks in and says, you really want to do this? You really want to investigate Harrison? And Joe's like, hell yeah, I do. 
clearly Barry is going to be very disappointed in Joe at some point, just like he's going to be disappointed in Harrison when he finds out what's really going on, like his real reverse flash plan. When you think about it, it seems like everyone's going to wind up hating each other at the end of the season. Everybody has something about themselves that they're not telling someone else. Moving on to number two, Cisco versus Pipe Piper. It's so fun to see Cisco finally get a rivalry, like he has a nemesis now. He seems like such a positive person, it's hard to believe that there's someone that he does not like. They teased an upcoming Firestorm episode at the end when Hartley Rathaway is like, I know all about Firestorm, you're gonna let me out because I'm gonna help you find him. That's another situation like you have with the Flash and the Reverse Flash, like our Harrison and Barry Allen, as well as the Roses, Captain Cold and Heatwave. There's always like a pair of characters, one of them creates an elaborate plan, they need the other person to help them, and they, they might not like him quite as much, they might have to put up with him. So like, Captain Cold, not a huge fan of Heatwave, but really needs his help in taking down the Flash. Then you have the Reverse Flash, or Harrison Wells, who wants to siphon the Speed Force for some elaborate plan. Can't really tell if he likes the Flash, he's at least he's tolerating the Flash because he needs him. And now you have Sisko and Hartley Rathaway, so Sisko's gonna be forced to work with someone he doesn't like because he wants to find his friend. I really like the way they're structuring the narrative that way, where you have these uh, elaborate plans that each of the characters are involved in, and they always need someone else to complete it, and, and the story of their relationship with that other person becomes really interesting. And my number one moment, Harrison Wells explains his plan. So if it wasn't totally clear, obviously he's using the tachyon device to siphon speed force. It seems like he's going to take Barry Allen's milkshake and drink it up. Like that, that's what his ultimate plan is, the temporary fix being the tachyon device. The real question is, is what does he want to do with the Speed Force once he gets it? I think he's going to try and alter the timeline. His relationship with the Speed Force also raises a lot of questions. What I think is going on is they're mixing and matching details from different versions of the Reverse Flash. So Harrison Wells' character draws from aspects of Eobar Thawne as well as Hunter Solomon. So he's not one or the other. The show is, is just kind of like mixing and matching aspects. So it's faithful to the comics, but not in a literal sense. Like it's not copy and paste. If you're not familiar with the story of Eobard Thawne, so he's from the 25th century. In that era, the Speed Force does not exist. There are no flashes. They do have a Flash museum where they study the Speed Force. Eobard becomes an expert in Flash studies, you know, really idolizes Barry Allen. There was a lot of talk about people idolizing people in this episode. So the students at the school there at the Flash Museum name him Professor Zoom because he's so smart, because he knows so much about the Flash. Eventually, he comes into possession of the Flash's suit, uses that to replicate the experiment that created the Barry Allen Flash, and then becomes the Reverse Flash. But he can't become the Reverse Flash if Barry Allen never became the Flash. Right now, he seems more like a battery operating at half charge, like he keeps having to recharge himself every once in a while. That also seems like a narrative device, because if his powers worked the same way Barry Allen's did, then why wouldn't he just super speed all over the place all the time? If you've never read it, the story that immediately precedes Flashpoint deals with the idea of the multiverse and how Barry Allen is the generator of the Speed Force. So like, all the other flashes all over the multiverse all originate from Barry Allen. He's the person that creates the Speed Force, so to speak, that all of them all live off. So if he dies, the Speed Force dies with him, which is why it's so important that he stays alive. Tom Cavanaugh, also the TCA's, described himself as a time-traveling thief, so I think if you're gonna call him one flash or the other, I'm gonna call him Aobard Thawne, but I, I don't think that's exactly the way his character's gonna play out. Feel free to leave all your theories in the comments, though. We all, we all have great Reverse Flash theories. We're gonna get a whole lot more Harrison Wells running around doing crazy stuff. So here's my big question for you guys. Do you think that Harrison Wells is a combination of multiple Reverse Flashes, his character is, from the comics? And what do you think he's gonna do once he gets Barry Allen's powers, once he takes his Speed Force? So while you guys think about that, here are just some of the Easter eggs I saw in the episode. So we had Royal Flush Gang at the beginning. They were also featured on Arrow too. So they're, they're kind of like being passed around the DC TV universe. Believing in heroes, heroes believing in us was a common theme across the entire episode. So if you never read it, Eobard Thawne idolized the Barry Allen Flash before he became the Reverse Flash. So you have Barry worshiping the person who worshiped him as a child. It's really funny. Harrison Wells talked about the road from the earth to the stars. I'd like to believe that's a subtle Easter egg for the new gods. Jeff Johns is getting ready to write like an Orion comic, like a New Gods comic real soon. Maybe season two, we might see some more Easter eggs for New Gods, but they're a little more fantastical, so I'm not expecting them on the, on the show anytime soon. Then Pied Piper starts talking about vibrational frequency. Everything has a vibrational frequency. So the Flash is able to actually vibrate his molecules through solid objects. So we'll see him phase through walls, hopefully before the end of this season. 
Also, the universe has a vibrational frequency, so he can vibrate into other dimensions under the right circumstances. That would be like the back door to Flash of Two Worlds. So, you know, hopefully we'll get to that in like, you know, maybe the next two or three seasons. No idea when they'll get into multiverse. If you saw any other Easter eggs that I, I didn't mention somewhere in the video, just write them below in the comments. But I, I'd say the only big thumbs down I had were one, you know, Hartley's character didn't feel like, you know, it was quite shown why he was such a dick in the past. Harrison Wells explained it, but TV is very much like a, a show me, not tell me medium. So it, I feel like the explanation didn't really do him justice. And I mentioned it before, but this is like the second big rogue to goad the Flash into a fight. So at some point they're going to have to acknowledge it. Like, okay, Barry, fight smarter, not fight faster. This is all a process though. I mean, I mean, this is the story of the Flash becoming the Flash, getting better. So, you know, you expect him to fall on his face every once in a while. So next week, really awesome stuff. We're gonna get to see some really cool Flash karaoke. Be sure to subscribe to get that video. We'll get to see Barry Allen have a real deal sex life. For those asking, my, my Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. video is gonna post tomorrow morning. And if you haven't seen it already, I just did a trailer breakdown for Fantastic Four. So a whole lot of superhero stuff happening tonight. It's been a really interesting day. So if you guys haven't seen it yet, I did a big explainer video for Gorilla Grodd and his character history in the comics. They basically, they teased that he's going to be coming back in season one. You can click here to learn all about that. It's going to be really cool. And you can click here if you haven't seen that Fantastic Four trailer. Thank you so much for watching. So let's all high five. I'll see you guys tomorrow.